Hello Wolves fans and welcome to a brand new season of Wolves Weekly. My name is John Potter, the Director of Athletic Media here at Western Oregon University. On today's show, we'll be joined by men's basketball coach Jim Shaw, now the coach of the number one ranked Western Oregon men's basketball team. After that, we will spotlight back to the gridiron. So we'll be joined by Arne Ferguson, the head coach of the football team. That plus the Wolfpack Rally gets you all up to date in the world of Western Oregon sports. That comes to you next on Wolves Weekly. As promised, we're joined on Wolves Weekly by the head coach of now the top-ranked Wolves men's basketball team, Jim Shaw. Coach, welcome to Wolves Weekly. Thank you. At this point in the season, 20-2 and two overall number one in conference, and now number one in the polls. Could you have ever imagined this success so early in your Wolves tenure career? You know, we never thought about it. I never thought about it. We never talked about it. We talked about the journey and that we were starting at the start of the year and in the process we were on and trying to get better and, and trying to do, compete and play our best basketball in February and March. And The guys really deserve most of the credit. They've done a good job all the way through. Take us through yesterday's practice. Was there any difference in attitude based on, hey, we're the number one team in the nation now? You know, we talked before practice when we went out there about a few different things. And, and uh, you know, we talked about, you know, my definition of ego, which is, which is just insecurity with a personality and a voice. And so not to take on more than what you need to that way and, and, uh, and trying to stay gr grateful for the opportunity that we have in front of us Thursday. And, and approach it the same way. From your perspective, what has been the biggest surprise in your return from Monmouth? Obviously a player and a student back in the 80s, now returning as head coach. Well, a lot of things are the same. You know, a lot of the same people are still my friends that were my friends then. And, and obviously uh, the town is, has, has grown in some ways to kind of uh, close it, make it closer with the college and the college experience. And, and um, other than that, Things are pretty similar. School's a little bigger. Personally, your coaching style has had to develop over the, the time as your assistant coach in, at Oregon State and under Kelvin Sampson at, at, at Oklahoma. Uh, what, who have been your biggest influences? What, who have you taken different philosophies from to get the Coach Shaw coaching style that we see on the sidelines of the new PD building? Well, I could go through and there's a little bit from everyone that I've been able to gleam or to, to learn. Ultimately, you have to be true to yourself and you have to be the best you you can be. But I've learned from everyone, and if you said, which models do we follow the most closely, it would probably be St. Mary's and Oklahoma. Uh, you mentioned St. Mary's, which is one of your last stops. Uh, it just seems like there's a coaching tree starting to develop out of that school with you now here and uh, Coach Corey down at Cal Baptist, and, and it's kind of rooting in the Division II ranks. How, how do you feel? That coaching tree is going to influence how things are run in the Division II ranks, especially in the West region. Well, it's hard to say because I forgot one that's a good friend of mine, Kyle Smith at Columbia. Sure. And, um, but Coach Bennett has a pretty good model there, and he, uh, he does a lot of pretty sound things for the people that are exposed to it. And Aran Ganat at Hawaii is another one. Have a, have a pretty good blueprint to follow. So, so I could see it expanding even more. First year head coach here at Western Oregon, Jim Shaw, joining us. Let's focus back on the team. Uh, Four-fifths of the starting rotation were a part of the NCAA tournament team from a year ago. Uh, how does that core group really kind of influenced how the start of the season began and now the development through 22 games of your schedule? Well, obviously their maturity level, their experience level. Um, we've had multiple guys make big shots and big plays at crucial times. Uh, and they've been through it before and, and they came in knowing what the grind was like and, and then we supplemented that with a couple of older guys with Tanner Omler and Alex Ross so, so even though we'll rotate other guys in a lot of ways those six guys play 90 plus percent of the minutes. You mentioned Tanner Omelette and Alex Roth, two guys who have had Division One experience but also local guys. Tanner went to Central High School and Alex in Salem. Uh, how big were those two guys coming into the program to supplement the, the Andy Abgees, the Jordan Wileys, the Devon Alexanders, and Jordan and uh, Julian Nichols? Well, when I watched film from last year, I thought one thing that would sure be nice would be to have a guy that could come in off the bench and score. And, and Alex is second or third leading scorer of the team. He yeah. scored 
leading scorer up at Western Washington, leading scorer at Simon Fraser. So, I mean, he's a guy that's capable of scoring 20 on any given night. Sure. And so that's, a, that's certainly something that is a great supplement. And then Tanner is uh, the ultimate little things guy. You know, he gives us a second de defensive stopper besides Devon. And he gives us, uh, he leads our team in steals. He's second in blocks. He leads us in field goal percentage. And he's just, uh, he's a tough guy that plays really hard. And so he gives you a guy that adds to your identity. So I think one adds to your scoring, one adds to your identity. This week you've got Western Washington and Simon Fraser coming in. It's rematches. You've gotten victories over both of them. What do you expect from the Vikings and the Klan coming into Monmouth this week? Well, Western Washington uh, was picked to win the league and, and on paper have the most returning points, players, all those types of things, and, and are certainly a team that's capable of beating anyone. They won up at Alaska Fairbanks and won at Central Washington, so they're, they're dangerous for all the obvious reasons. Simon Frazier is still a little bit behind in some areas. Um, you can't take any game for granted, but at the same time, S Simon Frazier is a, a little bit behind. Western Washington on paper. You know, if the game were played on paper, uh, it could be a problem, and it could still be a problem on the court, but but uh, they have as much talent as they want to leave. I know coaches don't like to look forward to things, but next week you do make that kind of daunted trip up to Alaska to take on Fairbanks and Anchorage. How big of a trip is that going to be, not only for confidence heading into the GNAC tournament, but potentially a chance to host the NCAA Regional here in Monmouth? Well, both teams are really good. Um, they play each other tomorrow night, I believe, and, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Fairbanks beat him. Um, I worked for McDermott at Fairbanks, too. He's also sure. someone I learned a lot from. And uh, the difficulties of the trip are, are added to just by how good they both are. Yeah. I mean, I think they're both NCAA tournament caliber teams, and sure. Anchorage uh, is another one. I mean, they've got two guys in Wiggs and, and McGill that are obvious all-conference players, and, and so how good both teams are, and obviously logistics combined make it very difficult. Sure. Before they make that trip to Alaska, they're here at home. Thursday at 7 in the annual Red Owl game against Western Washington, and on Saturday against Simon Fraser, also at 7 o'clock. He is the coach of the top-ranked Wolves. Coach Shaw, thanks for the time. You're welcome. We'll be right back after this on Wolves Weekly. Welcome back to Wolves Weekly, joined by Western Oregon head football coach Arn Ferguson. All right, here's the tough question. Mm -hmm. Boil down the entire 2015 season into like three or four nuggets of greatness. Um, first of all, our, our team as a whole um, really developed throughout the season. Yeah. Uh, we do play a lot of young players. Um, we're at as a team, and to see their development and the progress, um, continuing to move forward as a team, being 7-4 and four in our 10th winning season, um, huge compliment to our team because sure. their competition is extremely high. Yeah. Uh, if you can, what are going to be those major highlights of mm -hmm. the season? Mm -hmm. Obviously a win over North Alabama, mm -hmm. nationally ranked coming into here, but what are the things that are going to remind you in 10, 15, 20 years of this 2015 squad? Um, a lot of great plays uh, as a team. Um, the things that stand out is uh, foremost highlight in our season to play a, a sixth ranked team, Northern Alabama, the first game of, I mean, at home here uh, is extremely tough. And to have Phillip, um, our third string quarterback, come in and really develop a drive along with Malik Braxton um, to and Andy Avi end up catching a touchdown, I believe. Um, though that was really pressure solidified um, the will and also the development of our players there. Um, Central Washington, Malik's cutback, opening that game up was huge um, because Central Washington, as we know, is a very good team. Um, so that was obviously, as a true freshman from Washington, to be able to make that play was a, a very good highlight for our season. Continuing in the development of a player as you now transition into what technically is a second season in mm -hmm. the recruitment process with the accolades of your 10th consecutive season in, mm -hmm. the, in the winning books and having a regional ranking with everything mm -hmm. on the line in that last game. Yeah. As of right now, this taping, you've signed 30 guys to mm -hmm. come in. What were kind of the direct impacts you wanted to hit in recruiting and how mm -hmm. have the people that you've signed filled those needs for you? Yeah, we're different than a lot of our competition. Uh, we do believe in our foundation. Um, we have 16 Oregon kids. It's a huge foundation for us. We have over 80 to 90 Oregon kids on our team. And then out of state, we look for kids that um, can fill an extra role that we don't have. Um, for example, we talked about Malik, I mean, sure. um, last year. Um, 
So overall class is real good balance. Um, we've been, I believe, eight times number two in our conference. We're only a, a play away sure. um, from really taking that forward. Um, our, our competition is going to be extremely tough. Azusa is very strong. Um, Humboldt, obviously, in the playoffs, very strong. Central Washington is very strong. I mean, those are hard games, and we're going to play them twice. So the depth and the length and the physicalness that it's going to take to win those games um, is going to be immense and develop those players. We are very pleased of where we're at right now. The whole process of recruiting, not it, it's just not one person. It's not you. It's the entire staff going out and not only looking in their own kind of area in, mm -hmm. in, in relates to offensive line mm -hmm. or defensive back, but really a team effort is, hey, I've got a guy in this area that I think you should look at. Mm -hmm. Talk about your coaching staff and how important they are in the recruiting process. Uh, first of all, we're, we're fortunate that West Army has been a teacher college for so long and the health and PE, now exercise science, have sure. placed so many coaches throughout the state. Um, they are our best eyes and our best alumni um, that really gives a, a a clear picture of the person that we recruit to be successful at a Division II level. Um, Josh Manning, our recruiting coordinator, um, does a really good job throughout the, all of the Northwest from Alaska all the way to Hawaii. Sure. Um, so his organization is really good. Um, and the third thing is, is our university um, and our coaches sell what West Oregon is, a place where they're going to have eye contact, professors are going to know who they are, sure. and they're going to get a very quality education. Now, as you look forward to what will be spring ball, mm -hmm. getting ready and preparing for it, looking at the schedule with some D1 games mm -hmm. on there, one of the kind of toughest schedules that you have, what are your expectations heading into spring ball? What are the foundations that you want to build in April and May to get you ready for kickoff mm -hmm. in September? Um, first of all, we're, we're close to releasing our schedule. Um, we do have two Division One teams. We've been arguably, in the last three years, the toughest schedule or the top three um, in Division Two. Uh, next year will be bar none the toughest schedule. Um, we know that it takes depth, it takes players. Our players want to play at that level. Um, and we have to have a spring ball that's very physical but also very healthy, which is really hard to manage and back and forth. Um, but that's our task, so we can handle that type of schedule. Okay, final thing. Take me to wherever you watch NFL football games mm -hmm. in December. You're sitting back watching the Denver Broncos and the San Diego Chargers. Mm -hmm. Take us through your mindset. What kind of expression do you have when Terrell Williams makes that touchdown grab in the NFL? Um, <laughs> first of all, um, this is joy for Tyrell. He's worked hard in this program. Um, he had some options out of high school. We ended up being his best option. And obviously it fell through where um, the things we talked about him being on the field early, yeah. getting the playing time, coming from an offense and a small school that didn't throw the ball much. You needed playing time. Um, and those things end up being true. But also Tyrell's work ethic, his desire, and his ability. I mean, he's yeah. six four with the fastest guy on their team. That their their quarterback will even tell him that his upside is extremely good. We feel that um, him staying healthy um, for one year, who hasn't been healthy for a complete year since his freshman year, yeah. that his upside is going to be off the charts in the future. Well, exciting things for around the NFL, but also exciting things for the Wolves as they get ready for spring ball and a 2016 season. Arne Ferguson, the head coach of the football team, joining us. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We'll be right back with the Wolfpack Rally. You're watching Wolves Weekly. This week's edition of the Wolfpack Rally kicks off now. Catch up with the 2015 Hall of Fame class that was inducted by Western Oregon Athletics. Six new inductees in the class, and if you want to catch all of the highlights, you could do so on Blue TV. Baseball and softball starting their seasons on the road. You can catch the baseball team here in action in Monmouth on the weekend of March 12th and 13th, playing conference doubleheaders against St. Martin's, while the softball team will start a week earlier. You can see them March 5th and 6th. They'll play a doubleheader against the Saints on March 5th and against the Wildcats of Central Washington on March 6th. 
down at the softball field. Senior day is right around the corner for the basketball teams. You can catch the men as they host Concordia on senior night, Tuesday the 23rd of February, a 7 p.m. tip inside the new PE building. And you can also catch the women as they will highlight their three seniors in their class on Saturday, February the 27th at 2 o'clock inside new PE. And that's it for this week's Wolfpack Rally. We thank you for joining us for this edition of the season premiere of Wolves Weekly. Next time we'll be joined by Steve Anchetta of the women's soccer team talking about his season as well as his recruiting class that he just signed. Until next time, go Wolves!